Hello everyone, this is Teacher Emily, and today we will be learning about successful orchard growers. Edit the Kuikui of Ref Mud Farms. Edit the Kuikui owns the largest dragon fruit farm in the country in Ilocos Norte. Her farm was a result of her search for a cure for her daughter's illness. The Dragon Lady, as she is called, was able to grow her business through process in innovation and research. And her farm is very notable for its zero-waste farming practices. With the expansion of her business, Edith realized the need to register her agribusiness and encourage other local farmers to engage in dragon fruit production. Her dragon fruit is distributed here in the country and abroad. Her vision is to make the Philippines a very big producer of dragon fruit. Sinen Bakani of La Puerta Incorporated. The former Department of Agriculture head during the presidency of Corazon Aquino and former country manager of Dolly Philippines and Costa Rica. Sinan Bakani knows a lot about agriculture. He is now the CEO of one of the largest exporters of bananas in the country, La Puerta Incorporated. Determined to help his community in Mindanao, he converted vast lands into a plantation that now produces 5 to 6 million boxes of Cavendish bananas and exports them to the Middle East and countries in Asia. They use their tagline as an inspiration. We excel because we care. True enough, it is not only their world-class products that made them big, but also their efforts to care and value their hard-working farmers. Ferdinand Marañon Ferdinand Marañon started his career in sales and marketing. After 14 years in that field, he ventured into agriculture. In 1980, he put up the Sagrex Group of Companies. For over 30 years, Sagrex has not stopped opening new markets and dominating the competition in terms of agricultural trading. It has grown to at least five different companies engaged in the production and sale of different products, catering the different needs of the market, from fertilizer trading to packaging innovation. Today, they are one of the largest exporters of this product and around the world. Grover Rosit Filipino farmer Grover Rosit's inspiring rags to riches story began when he pushed through with his passion for plants and gardening. He planted cocoa trees, which he considered eventually to be the gold in plants as it has been the reason for his comfortable life. Now, he earns over 50 times than his previous job as a postman, wherein he receives a moderate wage. A Filipino farmer, Grover Rosit did not expect at that he would live a comfortable life. Years before, when he was just a hard-working postman who tried to make ends meet regularly. Jaime Matabang In 1968, Jaime Matabang and his family migrated to Santa Rosa, Pangasinan to start a new life. He was only 22 years old during that time and romantically dreamed of tending vegetables while raising his kids in their farm. It was in 1982, however, when Mang Jaime thought of planting calamansi, popularly known as calamundin, a citrus fruit tree native in the Philippines and the most commonly grown backyard tree in the country. This vitamin C rich fruit is processed into beverages, syrups, concentrates, juices, preserves, jams, candies, and etc. From 1982 
from a mere hectare, Mang Jaime's plantation grow to seven hectares, but admits that that presently he only uses two hectares of his calamansi farm because he divided the other five hectares to his two married children. Still, that's around 1,500 calamansi trees and yields on an average of four tons of calamansi fruits per year. Hill T. David of Mango Orchard Hill T. David is a retired officer of the Philippine Army, the son of a farmer in the barrio of San Isidro, Bacolor, Pampanga. He has loved the farm his father tended for the family. Upon his retirement, he decided to go back to his native town of Bacolor and live a peaceful life of a farmer. He purchased a 10 hectare farm and planted it with the rows and rows of mango trees of the sweet variety of Carabao mangoes. Today, Hills Mango Orchard is one of the most prosperous mango orchards in the barrio. Besides the good profit, it has provided employment to many residents of the barrio. Ben M. Santos of Jackfruit Orchard Ben became an orphan at young age of 12. He and his two sisters were adopted by his mother's and married brother, his uncle Jose, who owned a jackfruit farm in Bataan. Ben's uncle, being a farmer, taught the children the basics of farming. Ben's uncle owned a 5-hectare farm where jackfruit trees are planted. The farm is well known among residents of the town where their jackfruit is much sought after by vendor and owners of small industries making fruit reserves. The jackfruit orchard has been profitable business for over a decade now. After the death of his uncle, Ben and his sisters took over the management of the farm. Market Demands for Fruits Planting fruit trees is a profitable business if one puts his or her full attention and has technical knowledge and skill in planting coupled with hard work and determination. The demand for fruits in the local and international market continues to be high because more people realize the importance of fruits in the diet. Nowadays, people across ages are becoming more and more health conscious. They realize the importance of good nutrition in promoting good health. Fruits are part of the daily intake of most Filipinos and people across the world. That is why the demand of fruits in the market remains high. That's all for today kids. I hope you have learned something significant today. Till next time!